Hey guys, it's Merce. Welcome back to Harpies in the Trees, where I review horror books with a supernatural focus. Guys, I hope you're doing well. I am so excited to get this library tour video to you. I am really, really happy with what I've done with it. I feel like it's spooky and it has this Halloween vibe to it. So I hope if anything, it just gets you in the mood for Halloween. I hope you enjoy the tour and also the Q&A. I also wanted to let you know that I have a new series coming out. It's something that I'm gonna try and do once a month, I hope, because this is not gonna just be me, it's gonna involve other people. So it is a series where myself, a, another fellow booktuber and an author are going to do a video together where we talk about our top five whatever the theme is. So it's gonna be a lot of fun. It's really just kind of an excuse to talk and chat about books and everything in between, I guess. So I'll be releasing that little teaser intro trailer pretty soon. So I'm real excited. I'm really excited about that. There are a lot of things that are gonna be coming up in the next few weeks that I'll be a part of. So it's just the busy season. It's the best season. Everything's happening at once, but it feels so exciting. And I can't wait to share all of those things with you guys. Today, we're gonna to be talking about Playing Children by Michael Schutz and Hospital Hill by Katherine Anderson. Now, these are part of the Scary Locations TBR, and I broke into it when I went on vacation. I did ask you guys if you wanted a wrap up by itself or into like paired reviews. And I think it was like half and half. So I'm gonna go ahead and do the paired review. Um, and you can always just watch the wrap up instead when it comes out, I'll try to do it as quickly as possible because one, I am so excited to read those books. So I'm gonna dig into those right after these two. So I think it'll be pretty quick because most of them are fairly short. So we're gonna do, we're gonna review these today. But before we do the reviews, let's do this comment shout out real quick because I thought it was pretty cool and you guys might find it useful. It's from Brittany Lehman and she says, Adrian King from Friday the 13th, she's the one that narrates the audiobook of Final Girls Support Group. So that's pretty cool. That's very meta. I'm very into that. Uh, so if you were wondering if you should get the audiobook or read the book, the audiobook sounds like it could be pretty immersive, especially when it's an actress that's going to be narrating. That's pretty cool. Thank you, Brittany, for that awesome tidbit. So I almost forgot about my mini travel vlog that I did. This is where we stayed. It was very cute. And as soon as we got there, we went hiking. You should see this tree, so goofy. And here's the beach. It's so pretty, so extraordinarily windy. It was basically crinkling all of my pages. It was impossible. The water was perfect. Here we did the creepy creep puzzle. It was a lot of fun. It was actually pretty hard. And in the morning, the windows always look so nice. This is the beach in Arantoub. And this is us hanging out. Me having a crisis about playing children and waiting at the harbor to take a boat over to the other side so we can check out what's going on over there. There's some cows and some sheep. And this is a abandoned kids camp from the DDR days. So from the 1990s, it's been abandoned. Um, outside of the structure is also these triangular like, camping, I guess camping structures. But it's very, very cool. This is the first floor. This is the power room. And this is a stage. And this is the second floor. And here are some photos I took. The weather also turned pretty gnarly and it was raining pretty hard by the time we were leaving. And on the last day, this is me restarting playing children. Okay, let's get into these reviews because I got a lot to talk about. Hospital Hill begins with Valerie Martin, who she's just a few days from retiring as a nurse. And she has been called back to this asylum that she used to work at like 20 years ago that is now going to be closing down. And they want her to go through all of this paperwork in the basement. 
They want her to just sort of organize it, but as she's working on all of these filing cabinets and boxes full of paperwork, she's running across people that she knew when she worked at the asylum, and she's finding some very interesting and dark connections. Hospital Hill is like one of those mysteries that I feel like, you know, maybe your grandmother might have read or watched on TV. It's like a good mystery. It's just that it's not very titillating in any direction, really. It's kind of more like, it's good, but it's not gonna like blow your mind or anything. I did enjoy reading it though. I thought it was like a fun read because it's like you're, you're hanging out with this woman and we're also time traveling in a sense. So we are going back to the 1960s and the late 50s, back into the 90s and the 80s, going back and forth between all of these stories of these different people and how Valerie is able to connect them and what what is you know, the thing that is connecting them. Her time at the asylum is interesting, and I think that her perspective was really interesting because when she goes back to the hospital and it's already, you know, it's already in a state of decay. Like it's, the building already knows that it's gonna be torn down at some point very soon. So she's walking through the hallways and she's, and she's reminiscing in a way about um, the hospital itself, kind of how it ran when she worked there. Nurse? But what I thought was really cool was these little glimpses of um, these abstract memories that she had, I guess, where, you know, she would just remember how the light would fall through the pane of glass in, a, in the hallway and how beautiful and calming and quiet it was. And it was, um, so she had like little stuffs like that that I think really made her character feel very full, you know? So I liked her character. It was like very nurturing and kind of curious, but very bright. Um, one of the things that I was disappointed though with this story was that there wasn't as much research as I was hoping. So she's, you know, finding all of these documents and she's making all these connections, but that is a very small percentage of the story. And the story starts to more unfold in other ways. It also gives a really good look into the institution of mental health in these time periods. You know, from the late 50s up into the 1990s, we can see that there's this vast difference between certain eras and then the more modern eras. And that was really interesting to witness through the eyes of a nurse, you know, through the eyes of a nurse who on one hand supports, you know, what the doctors are doing, but on the other hand is very, very aware of the things that don't work and how the female patients are treated and you know, different things like this. So you have this person who's like kind of walking this line. Um, so that was definitely interesting. There is a little bit of a twist that comes up and it was a little unexpected, but it wasn't like super shocking. Uh, it didn't feel like anything new really i you know it feels very familiar kind of just the way that that played out so it didn't feel very exciting i guess to discover that's you know what it was but it was still good like i feel like the story itself was like a really solid story it just was sort of middle of the road for me i definitely want to like go through the ringer with all of my emotions with a really good mystery because i think that's what it is you know it's like you go in and you don't know anything about anybody and then you start making all of your assumptions based on whatever and then you go through this whole entire journey of figuring out what is the truth there are things in here that are intriguing. It just is not gonna grip you, okay? But this is a very wonderful Sunday read. It's something that's perfect for vacation. It's a really nice, quiet little mystery. Playing Children begins with Miles. Miles is um, a little bit uh, upset because his relationship with his boyfriend ended and it didn't end very well. And he's just kind of in this, you know, weird post-relationship 
kind of state of mind. And during all of this, his nephew is uh, accidentally killed in a car accident. At some point, he feels like he needs to visit his sister. He wants to check on them because they posted this really weird photoshopped image of them and Ian. And there's no way that this picture could have been real or existed because it was after his death. So he's going over there to see what's going on. His sister tells him that Ian is still alive and then he's actually at this reformatory school, but she doesn't know exactly where it is. Daniel and Miles get into a little bit of a argument and Daniel asks Miles to leave. But on the way out, Daniel tells Miles to go to this very specific German restaurant. Miles heads over to this restaurant and he ends up talking to this waiter and his mother. And the mother tells him, there's no reformatory here, unless you mean the abandoned orphanage. So Miles gets it in his head that he's gonna go to this abandoned orphanage and take some photos and prove to his sister that this is not a reformatory and you know, this is, there's no one here and what is really going on? So he heads out to the orphanage and he finds that it's not abandoned. So I've been mentioning this book off and on. So when I was done with this book, I was like, I'm fucking ragged. You let those children run you ragged. I am tired. I'm exhausted. I need carbs. I need sugar. I need a hot bath. I need, I need everything. And then I just want to go right back into it. If I feel like this would make an amazing horror survival game. The, the characters are awesome. The visuals would be a fucking so scary. And it would be, it, it, it would definitely be really good. So any game developers listening, please make this into a game. It left me sort of breathless in that sense where things are constantly happening and I'm just trying to hang on. The character, Miles, the way that he's written, it felt like he was experiencing everything that was happening. And I know that sounds kind of dumb to say because you're like, well, you know, characters are written to be in the, you know, the situations that they are and then they react and there's consequences. So it just felt like the character was being affected in real time. Like as I was reading it, it felt so real, I guess, in some aspects for me. The story is really cool and magnificent. There's like a lot of just like hidden horrors within it. Uh, the story just it's, it's layered in a lot of different ways, but it's not really layered like, you know, like this. It's kind of layered like this. The whole thing from the beginning to the end is basically supernatural. There's a lot of creepy stuff in there. Miles' character is a great uh, protagonist, I guess, because he's this very flawed person. He had a relationship with this guy, Jeremy, and they, you know, that relationship did not work out. He's feeling all of these emotions about that relationship. And this relationship constantly comes up, you know, throughout the book in ways of like remind Miles of maybe his inadequacies or something, um, or, you know, maybe his anger towards, you know, his ex-boyfriend who is gone now and how that anger is being reflected in the situations that, you know, are happening at the moment. He has an anger issue as well, and it's something that has always bit him in the ass. It's something that's always made things more difficult for him. And this becomes, you know, very present within the story as well as like, when he wants to be angry and he can't, uh, you know, when he wants his rage to fucking explode, but you know, it won't for some reason. And he calls this rage, he calls this anger, his rage dragon, his anger as a character as well. And basically he's sort of fighting his way through this situation. And this situation gets so bad and so scary, you know, and he's just trying to like keep it together because his mind, is also kind of like in an altered state because of his breakup with Jeremy, because of his issues with his sister, because of a lot of different things, because of his loss of Ian. Ian was like a really important person to him. So when you're trying to deal with reality coming at you and you're in an altered state, you know, it's kind of fuzzy. It's maybe you don't notice everything. Things don't always make sense to you. 
Um, maybe you miss something, maybe you're too internalized, and this, this, these kind of conflicts are so prevalent in real life that when I'm reading with, when I was reading it with Miles, I'm just like, yes, 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 you know? <laughs> like, it was just like, I, I just identify with Miles so much. There's also this thing that Miles does when his anxiety gets high. And he used to be an English teacher for like 20 years. So every time he gets super stressed, uh, he, he thinks of a quote from some book of literature that supports whatever he's thinking or feeling or whatever he's perceiving. So those are really cool. I have one to read to you like that because they do add this other layer. It's interesting because, you know, they're coming from books that you will recognize some of them and they have, those books have their own stories. So when you take those stories and you're overlaying them into this story, an extra creepiness into it. So I can read this one too because it's not gonna give any spoilers away. The tumble of curtain undulated, expanding, contracting like a heart muscle exposed and a cracked breastbone. And if you was to walk through the bedrooms now, you'd see the ragged, moldy bedclothes, a heaving and a heaving like seas. He teetered backward. So it's like, it's like quotes like that and they're all throughout the book. It's very cool. I love this. I read it on vacation and then as soon as I had finished it, I started rereading it. And I reread it much slower than I read it the first time because I just wanted to make sure that I absorbed everything. And there is something sort of weird about the book for me. Like I read it and it kind of, it doesn't make me depressed. It just puts me in a very weird state. And I really hate to be disturbed from that space. Uh, like when I'm reading on the tram or, you know, I have to get up and do something. Like I really don't want to be pulled out of it. And then when I am pulled out of it, I sort of just feel this weird loss. And I think that's like why I started rereading it again, which has never really happened to me with a book before. I mean, I reread books before, you know, like I've read The Hobbit like 50,000 times. I'm going on an adventure! But I've never read a book and then restarted it right away. And I think there's also like a little bit of an Easter egg in here because Miles is like exploring this little graveyard that's next to the abandoned cemetery. And there's like some names here like Franklin Perry and James Achenbrenner and Kurt Hauser. And there's one here that's called Matthew Schultz. <laughs> so I feel like, you know, he was kind of like hinting at himself here. Maybe not, who knows? Maybe he'll let me know. Maybe I'll ask him. He's actually super nice. Um, and I, um, he's commented on a few of my posts for this, so maybe I'll just ask him. There's a lot of interesting characters and there are some characters in there that are just straight up evil. <laughs> like just really evil. And the writing for me was really good because I felt like every word propelled you more into the story. It's a harrowing survival supernatural horror for adults. I would not let your kids read this. As for trigger warnings, there is a, a very brutal murder that happens between children. And there's a very sh small scene of animal abuse that does happen. Honestly, I could go on and on and on talking about this book, but I won't. So I hope that I don't hype it up for you too much because I know like sometimes people hype up books and then you're like, oh, I got it and I was expecting it to like blow my mind, but it didn't. I hope I didn't do that to you. But you know, if you like a supernatural book, this is a good one. You know, that's that's all I would go in with my, with expectations is that it's a really good supernatural horror survival book. It'll be fun. So that was the review for Hospital Hill and for Playing Children. I hope that you liked this video. Let me know if you've read these books, what you thought. If you liked this video, please like and comment. Subscribe if you like what you see. And if you want notifications when new videos come up, you know what to do. Other than that, please take care of yourselves, look out for each other, and I will talk to you next time.